As far back as I can remember, I've always been fascinated by coin-operated machines of all sorts. While the more modern electronic machines definitely make up the majority of my collection, I've always found mechanical machines to be an area of particular interest. So on one hand, we have the, the full-on digital electronic machines, and on the other, we have the purely mechanical ones. But in between these two philosophies of design, we have something that's like a sort of midway between those two, and that midway is known as electromechanics. An electromechanical machine is one that uses electricity, but it doesn't use any sort of processor or computer. The whole function of the machine is a, a chain reaction of voltage getting sent from one thing to the next. It's sort of like a set of dominoes falling over, but with an electrical circuit. And let's say you have one domino that's already fallen over. Normally, this would stop the chain, but if you insert a coin, that domino will stand up, allowing the chain to continue. If you extrapolate that concept out, you'll eventually get to the point where you can achieve some sort of limited form of automation. And that leads me directly into the topic of today's video. This is a cigarette vending machine from the 1950s. It's essentially an automated electronic clerk. It's able to count money and then give you a selection of different products at different prices and deliver those products to you, all without any sort of computer processor. However, this particular machine is currently doing absolutely nothing when you plug it in. So you might want to sit back, light up a cigar, and get ready for another full-length episode. Now I've got this machine right here sitting next to my uh, Erie Digger because I figured these two machines look the most antique and the most sort of interesting to a general person. So I thought it would kind of balance out the room since the rest of it looks like, well, what it looks like. But now that I've had this for a while, I mean, even once I get it working, it's not really going to do anything that entertaining or useful to me. So I'm probably just going to fix this up so I can resell it. It's been sitting here for a few months, and while it does look really neat, um, I've decided that I want to hard limit myself on a certain number of coin ops. And I could probably just resell this thing as is and make money off of it. I paid so little for it, but it'll be interesting to go through and document exactly how it works and how to fix whatever problem it has and then I'll get more money for it when I do sell it. So let's get started. Well, there's a lot to look at here, but I guess I should start with the most obvious thing. As you can see, the circuit board was severely damaged at some point, but it looks like it was repaired by a previous owner. I'm still going to go over all this though and make sure everything's correct. Another thing is that if I insert any coins, they get jammed in the coin validator here, so I need to see what that's all about. The first thing I need to do is see if I'm getting any power in the first place. This switch here looks really jacked up, and I already checked this fuse, so unfortunately, it's not just a fuse. Looks like the whole machine plugs into this outlet here. And as you can see here, the outlet is fed through this interlock switch, which is obviously compromised to some degree. Interlock switches are typically used to cut all power to a machine if the door is opened, as a safety measure. Typically, I'll move them to a location where they can be used as an easy access power switch. In this case, I decided to just bypass and remove it entirely. I then removed the original power cable so that I could replace it with one that wasn't 70 years old. I started to strip the wires on the new cable, but then I stopped myself. Turns out the wire needs to be threaded through this tiny hole in the back of the machine first, since the plug head wouldn't fit through it. I then tied a knot on the other side of the cable, that way it couldn't be yanked out of place. Now I can get the soldering in this new cable to bypass the broken switch. So I've got my multimeter out, and if I put my leads into this outlet, 
I get 120 volts. So now I can plug the rest of the machine back into the outlet and see what it does. At this point, I tried manually hitting the coin switches, since that coin mech was jammed, but I was still unable to get a response from the machine when I made a selection. However, I did get a load of movement and noise whenever I hit the coin return switch. So it's got a little latch right here, and if I lift it, it looks like I can, uh... Well, I can see that the vending motor at least works. So I briefly mothballed this machine and moved it into my shop until I could get a manual. Now I can use the schematic to hopefully find out what the problem is. Remember what I said before. Everything in an electromechanical machine has to work like a series of dominoes. The schematic is basically showing me the path of those dominoes. It allows me to follow that path and test every domino along the way. If one of those metaphorical dominoes was broken and wouldn't hit the next one if it fell over, I could replace or fix it, and that would put the machine back in working order, or at least lead me to the next problem. Exiting the metaphorical and looking at the schematic, I can see that power runs from the outlet to the coin switches. And from the coin switches, the power runs to the different coils on this accumulator. If I hit the coin switches, I can see that they power up one of the coils on that device. Each time a coil fires, it moves this metal rod up a little bit. This rod is inside of a plastic cylinder, with wires protruding out of it around the top. If I look inside of the cylinder, I can see metal contacts in line with those wires. I can test these with my multimeter, and see that these contacts are connected to those wires individually. That tells me that the way this machine counts money is that it moves that rod up the cylinder each time a coin is inserted. Coins of different values will activate different coils that move the rod a greater or lesser distance up the tube based on the value of the coin. Once enough coins are inserted, the rod will bridge one of the contacts on one side with the power supply contact on the other side, allowing voltage to pass from the outlet through the whole accumulator mechanism. However, if I test it with my multimeter, I'm not getting continuity across it. I am getting continuity across the contacts themselves to the wires and across the rod itself. So the issue must be with the connection between the contacts and the rod. I gently filed the contacts in the rod and then cleaned them with rubbing alcohol. And now I have continuity. Well, now I know I'm getting voltage to these switches here. but I'm not getting any result when I push any of these buttons. As you can see here, the board is a bit hacked up, but everything seems like it's been bridged back where it needs to go, and it all checks out with my multimeter. I'm guessing that something is wrong with the switches themselves on this circuit board, so I'm going to test my theory here by jumping from this voltage here, that comes from the accumulator, over to the output to the vending mechanism. Huh, well it works. That means I need to see what's going on with these switches. I took everything apart and found that the switches were absolutely filthy, so I cleaned them up and filed these contacts too. Well, I kind of put the cart before the horse on this one. I fixed everything else, but the coin mech itself is still jamming whenever I put coins in it. They're getting stuck right at this first validator, and even if I move them beyond that, they still don't go to the coin switches. So I'm going to take this thing apart and see what's wrong with it. I wonder if that has something to do with it. Well, this gives me a great opportunity to show off my latest toy. A Craftsman vacuum cleaner that runs on standard Craftsman tool batteries. This thing is one of my favorite purchases in quite some time. It removes cat hair from the carpet, the concrete, and the crevices. It even sends the dirt directly to the trash can via Bluetooth.
I'm going to wash off the inside of this device since the coins keep getting stuck before they even get to the bugs. Thankfully, the manual is really clear on how to do this. You should soak it in hot water for five minutes and then dry it off with a his towel. Yeah, the wife's not going to like it if you dry off the cigarette coin mech with her towel. So I soaked it in some hot water and let it sit for a few days. And now there's a storm blowing in, as you can hear. If I put in a coin now, it's still getting jammed every now and then. So I'm going to lubricate the part that keeps getting stuck. Just work this in a little. Okay, so now when I put in different coins, it activates the accumulator. And when I put in enough coins, I can make a selection on this board. and the machine runs its cycle. But these buttons are still really hard to push. So I'm going to lubricate them as well. I didn't get very far trying to lubricate the buttons from the outside, so I took the whole button mechanism apart. Oh, I probably just broke this light here. I probably wasn't supposed to do this this way. I wonder if that has something to do with it. Now that I've got this all lubricated, I wanted to show you this neat mechanism that keeps you from pressing multiple selections at once. Whenever you press in one of the buttons, this part here will block all the other buttons. That way, you can't push more than one thing, since there's no computer in this to tell it not to bend more than one thing at once. Now, I've got everything put back together at this point, but like I mentioned, a previous owner had fixed this massive hole in the circuit board by using solder and some bridge wires. The machine is working right now, but you can't change any of the prices since he soldered the price selection tabs directly to these traces. So I'm going to redo a few of these so that the price can be changed again. Well, the machine is working now, and hopefully you've been able to follow along decently well. But if not, you might want to leave the video now, because it's about to get pretty deep. These electromechanical machines are so simple and easy to understand that I figured I would put together a little explanation of how, from start to finish, this machine can vend you a pack of cigarettes at a certain price using nothing other than electricity flowing through certain switches. Honestly, I'm just interested in seeing if the viewership tanked right at this part of the video. I'm going to try to explain this as simply and understandably as possible, so bear with me for a moment. Power runs from the outlet to the coin switches. The mechanical coin validator ensures that only the right coin is sent to the right switch. Whenever a coin hits one of those switches, voltage passes through the switch over to one of the coils on that accumulator mechanism. Each coil will move the rod higher up the tube until it bridges one of the contacts to the power supply. Now, whichever contact the power is connected to will carry voltage to all of the switches that are connected to that contact. The tabs on that board allow the operator to switch between these contacts, meaning that he can raise or lower the number of coins that it takes to energize certain selection switches. When a switch is pressed, it activates the appropriate coil on the vending drawer, as well as the vending motor. 
There's also an extra contact on the bottom level of switches that tells the mechanism to move backwards instead of forwards, depending on your selection. Then a gear on the vending motor activates a switch which holds power on to the motor until the cycle is completed. The vending coil will lift a flap on the vending drawer, and the motor will move the drawer to push the product out of the hopper. Before the motor reaches the end of its cycle, it'll hit a switch that will send voltage to the coin return coil. However, if a product is being successfully vended when this happens, it will hit the product delivery switch, which will divert that voltage from the return coil to the collect coil instead. That way, if the machine completed a vend cycle, but nothing was dispensed, it could instantly return the money to the customer. But if it did vend a product, it would send it to the cash pan instead. Either way, voltage is also sent to the accumulator reset coil, dropping the metal rod back to its original position and resetting the whole machine. Well, there we have it. Even though it's several steps long and it seems complicated, it's actually a really simple system. And hopefully from watching this video, you'll be able to understand how you can go through yourself with a multimeter and just follow that circuit and see where any sort of interruption might be that could be causing your machine to not work. That said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, we'll catch you all on the Coin Jam podcast over at Overtime Arcade some other time. Goodbye.